So where we left off, we had just done two pH calculations from strong acid, HCl and HBr, and I showed you how to do it with an ice table, and then I showed you, yeah, there's a shortcut, and I told you, you can almost always use a shortcut, but you do have to be a little bit careful about using that shortcut. So here's an example where the shortcut is gonna be kind of tricky to use. Calculate the pH of six molar barium hydroxide, BaOH2. This one is kind of tricky for a couple reasons. So as a reminder, when somebody's asking us to calculate the pH, what they're really asking us is, or the first thing that we have to figure out is what is the H3O plus concentration? We need to know that in order to calculate pH. This barium hydroxide that we're working with now, this is a base, it's not an acid. And so it's just in general, it's not quite as straightforward. Let's make an ice table. And as we make the ice table, I think you'll see why this one is not quite as straightforward. Barium hydroxide is one of our strong bases, and that means by definition, when we put it in water, it completely dissociates. And when it dissociates, it produces the Ba2 plus ion and two hydroxide ions. And so in our ice table, initially, before anything happens, we have six molar, I'm gonna say 6.0, six molar barium hydroxide. Initially, we have no products. In this reaction, because barium hydroxide is a strong base, it completely dissociates. So all of the BaOH2 reacts completely. For the formation of the barium ion, because the stoichiometry of barium hydroxide is one to one, we know that we are making six barium two plus ions, again, because of the one to one stoichiometry. For the hydroxide ion, the stoichiometry is one to two. For every one barium hydroxide, we make two OH minus. If we have six barium hydroxides, we're gonna make 12 OH minus. And again, right here, we're looking at the stoichiometric ratio. If we have one barium hydroxide, we are going to make two hydroxides. If we have six barium hydroxides, we're going to make 12 hydroxides. So when this is all done, we have no barium hydroxide, we have six barium ion and 12 hydroxide ion. Uh, so right away, you might be able to see, here's one of the issues. The initial concentration of barium hydroxide, six molar, is not matching up with the concentration that we're ending with at the end of the ice table. The other problem that we have in this is that we haven't figured out the H3O plus concentration. We have figured out OH minus, but not H3O plus. Now that's okay because we have practiced going from OH minus to H3O plus. We have two different ways that we can go from OH minus to H3O plus. We could use KW, which is, as you know, one times 10 to the minus 14, and that is equal to H3O plus times OH minus. So in this particular problem, we know the KW value. We know the OH minus concentration and we can solve for H3O plus. My favorite way of doing this type of problem is to calculate pOH, the negative log of the OH minus concentration. Plugging in my OH minus concentration. So I'm um, plugging in the OH minus concentration and then solving for pOH. Negative log of 12 is negative 1.1. That's my pOH, and I know that pH plus pOH is 14. So the pH 
is 14 minus the pOH, 14 minus a negative 1.1. So the pH of this solution is 15.1. And yeah, that's okay. It's okay to be above 14. If somebody has beat it into your head that the pH scale stops at 14, that's totally not true. So uh, maybe if you're doing a problem like this and you want to kind of shortcut it without using an ice table, if you feel really confident, you could say, I'm gonna do a POH calculation. I am going to look up at the initial concentration of my barium hydroxide. I'm gonna see that it's six molar, but I am going to pay attention to this little two right here. And I'm gonna know that for every one BaOH molecule, I'm going to be producing two OH minuses, which means I need to double the initial concentration. And you can jump straight to 12. And then go from there. Either way, you can use an ice table or you can just kind of do those calculations in your head, do the thought process in your head, but you will get the same answer either way.